30 years ago, when the King's Road in Chelsea was synonymous with swinging England, a dashing young race driver from Scotland formed an alliance with Ken Tyrrell and Ford, and their success was part of an era of optimism, which established Tyrrell as one of the top teams in Formula One. A collection of world championships with Stewart, a season of glory in the late 80s with a DFV against the turbo cars and a revolutionary six-wheeler which won a Grand Prix are the moments in Tyrrell history which are best remembered, along with Harvey Postlewaite's anhedral front wing on the 018 and John Alesi's stunning drive in a car that seemed to have been made for him. change in the posh Kings Road address that once housed Campbell's assault on the world speed record is now a smart new cafe, complete with espresso machines and canapes. Assisted by TV glamour girl Denise Van Outen, Ken Tyrrell unveiled eventually the last Formula One car to bear his name, marking the end of an era which has lasted 31 years. The design team feels that the new car is fairly well settled, though there'll be detail changes through the season, probably in the area of the front wing. The rear wing and retention of Tyrrell's trademark X-wings are unlikely to alter much, if at all. The big talking point is that this season seems to be much more of an open book than any season in the recent past, and that supposedly gives small teams with clever design and a strong package the chance to shine against the big budgets. It, it won't be a two-horse race for the championship in 1998. There'll be probably three or four teams involved, you know, and uh, so I think it will be a very interesting season. Good chance for Tyrrells on the podium? Yeah, I think so. I think that uh, well, a, a lot will depend on, on who the other driver is, of course, uh, and we obviously we would like to have an experienced driver. Um, uh, it, it, it's hard to expect a new boy coming into Formula One to, to finish in the first six in his first year these days. Um, it, it's a long time since that happened, but uh, we shall see. So far, there's no news about a second driver who'll take over the other 026, though it may yet be Josh Verstappen. This car spent 30% longer in the wind tunnel than last year's car, and the width reduction has made it possible to design a car which is more efficient in terms of its lift to drag ratio than previously. When you start narrowing the track of the car, it changes all the aerodynamics a little bit. I mean, it depends. There are those people who want to see huge and radical changes, but these cars already are starting to look quite a lot different in detail to the way they looked last year. Um, the side pods have got much longer because of the side impact regulation. Um, and and the, 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 the narrow front track will change the design of the front wing, the layout of the end plates. Uh, and so I expect we'll see, we, I expect as the cars are presented, we'll see them all looking different to last year, but maybe a little quite similar to each other. Like other designers who've spoken about their new cars this year, Harvey Postlesweight believes that most of the missing downforce has been recaptured. Unlike most of them, he won't now get the chance to refine the 026 for 1999, nor will Ken Tyrrell. I haven't uh, thought of it. In, in that way actually I've really thought about it in that this is our last year then let's get our finger out and let's get on and and try and get some good finishes next year Tyrrell becomes British American racing headed by Craig Pollock and under the design leadership of Adrian Reynard and the Ockham workshops will close their doors forever